How valuable can a nickel be? A Jefferson nickel struck at the San Francisco Mint. The U.S. Mint that currently has been closed. So what's so special about this nickel? And we will talk about them right after this. How much money do you really have in your pocket? A $204,000 penny found by a teenager. A $10,000 coin found in a Cheerios box. And an $18,000 penny found by one of our viewers. Got coins? JB Coins Inc. on YouTube. Daily videos and free giveaways. Join us today. Hey YouTubers, this is J and B. In this video, we will talk about nickels worth money you should know about and the 1970S nickel to be more specific. The 1970S nickel you should look for because it's worth good money. As always, we will give you their most recent sold prices so you truly will know their most recent values. The year 1970 is a little bit of a strange year for Jefferson nickel production. In 1970, the San Francisco Mint produced proof coins like it usually does, but it also produced regular business strike nickels. Since no nickels were being struck that year at the Philadelphia Mint, the San Francisco Mint took over regular business strike nickel production. From this point alone, the 1970S regular strike nickels are very collectible and were hoarded by Jefferson nickel collectors since the first day of issue. The San Francisco Mint was a little bit sloppy in their production, which is also very unusual for that mint. Now both nickels struck for business and released into circulation, as well as those struck for collectors and sold in proof sets, will bear an S mint mark. The only difference will be their finish, a regular finish for business strike nickels versus a shiny finish for proof coins. Both nickels are rare in high grades and super rare with full steps. Now for those new to the hobby, full steps or FS is the designation following the numerical grade of some regular strike MS60 or higher Jefferson nickels that have at least five separated steps or lines at the base of Monticello on the reverse. Any major disturbance or interruption of these steps or lines, whether caused by contact, planchet problems, or any other source, will result in the coins not being designated FS. Only the slightest weakness on any step or line is allowed for this designation to be granted. For those who watch us regularly, we're sorry that we repeat some of the terms in our videos, but beginners usually don't know these terms and we want them to fully understand what we're talking about too and what they need to pay attention to. Now, the San Francisco Mint struck a little bit over 214 million regular business strike Jefferson nickels. The 1970S nickel is very common in Mint State, especially in MS64 to MS65. Even some MS66 examples can be, can be found. But anything better has not been seen yet. Full step examples are scarce, and therefore these nickels are very collectible and valuable. As for nickels with full steps, the highest grade known is MS66FS, with only eight examples graded by PCGS. And recently, this coin in Mint State 66 FS was sold at Heritage Auctions for $3,240. It's amazing money for a coin you can find in your change. And yes, look at this coin closely. Grade MS 66 you can find in your change. And again, for those new to the hobby, 
When you see on a slab MS, it means mint state. Before the number, in this case 66, it applies to regular business strike coins. When you see PR or PF, depending on the grading company, PCGS will apply PR designation, while NGC will apply the PF designation. Those apply to proof coins. And if you didn't know that this year is very valuable for nickels, try to remember and look for them when checking your change, rolls of nickels, and sets. As for proof Jefferson nickels, the San Francisco Mint struck a little bit over 2.6 million nickels that year. And they also struck them in not the best condition. And therefore, they are also selling for good money. First of all, there is not a Proof 70 DCAM currently known, which would be the best possible grade. So obviously, the first nickel found in that grade would be worth a whole lot of money. So checking, or maybe even buying, 1970 Proof sets might not be a bad idea. But if you want to look for 1970S regular strike nickels in a set, you'll need to search through uncirculated sets, not proof sets. Going back to proof nickels, the highest grade for this coin is proof 69 decam. And this coin is the latest sale, and it sold at Heritage Auctions for $228. Very nice money for a proof coin. The 1970S nickels also do have numerous S over S mint mark varieties, also called RPMs. All of them are quite minor, however, they are very cool to have or find. Many of them you can see in this picture. There are many errors on this year's nickels. Since, like we said, the San Francisco Mint wasn't striking their coins in the best quality as they usually do. And we will share a few with you here. The first one is super cool. It's a 1970S double struck nickel. Second strike obverse struck through planchet. It also has a full step designation. This cool error sold at Heritage Auctions for $2,070. The next error, the 1970S Jefferson Nickel struck on a proof dime planchet graded proof 64, it sold at Heritage Auctions for $1,725. And the last one we will share with you here is this 1970S nickel struck on a one cent planchet. Many of this type of errors do exist. So because of larger population, this coin sold at Heritage Auctions for $305. It's amazing how much these errors are bringing. And you can find them in your change, so always check your change. We hope you liked this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe so we can create more videos for you. Also, please remember to hit the little bell and set it so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video or do a live stream. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.